Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to XMMA, the future of fighting, live right here tonight in West Palm Beach, Florida, at the beautiful Palm Beach Convention Center. And now, let's get the party started with our first bout of the evening. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, standing 5 feet 8 and weighing in at 155.6 pounds. Tonight, he comes to the ring with a record of four wins and two defeats. Representing Young Tigers Foundation and fighting out of Miami, Florida. Please welcome Hilbert Castillo Lorenzo. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, standing 5'11 and weighing in at 155 pounds. Tonight, he comes to the ring with a record of two wins and two defeats. Representing MMA Masters and fighting out of Miami, Florida. Please welcome Charles Chuck Buffalo Redke. This bout is set for three five minute rounds in the XMMA lightweight division. And when the action starts inside the ring, our referee, Mr. Andrew Glenn. Here we go, Chris. We're waiting for this. Time to start the fight. Let's go. Charlie Racky and Wolverine Castillo. Both fighters wearing black shorts. Man, and, and you can just tell right from the beginning, this is a, a very big, big cage, a lot of room. 30 feet it is, a bit, very big size cage. I think that's as big as the cages get. Racky pressing his opponent up against the cage. It looks like it's double underhooks. Absolutely, uh, double underhooks. Position, you're always fighting to get, whoever's getting the underhook tends to be winning these fights in, in these little exchanges right there. So you want to get the double underhook, it's easy to get a body lock, pull the guy, get on top, get in the mount position. You know, I'm impressed, considering this is the first prelim of the night, both these guys are very, very good fighters, both in very good shape, they're both looking very svelte. This is going to be a great matchup, I'm really telling you. Well, right now, Red, he, he's trying to dominate the position right now, wears the opponent out a little bit. Unfortunately, it seems like even if not much has happened, the person who's pushing the guy into the fence is winning the fight. Well, it's controlling the, the cage generalship or aggression. He's dictating where the fight's taking place. So that is one of the criteria the judges are looking at. Another inside, oh, what happened there? A little slip by Racky as he threw that inside kick? Yeah, he threw an inside kick and it looked like he just lost his balance. I don't think it was any, he wasn't rocked or anything. A couple inside punches there from Racky. He looks, he looks real calm, and he looks, I mean, he looks very uh, composed in there. He's oh, a nice calf kick. calf kick right there. I think uh, people have been watching that happen and, and worked with some success lately. So. Yeah, and, it, and it's so hard to t to to uh, neutralize or block that kick, isn't it, Chris? Oh, I mean, it's it's very difficult. If you have any weight on there, it's going to do a lot of damage to you. I'm really liking right now the way Charlie. He's able to just he's mimicking nice. his opponent's hips. He's staying right in front of him. Nice momentary takedown there for Racky. Momentarily also had the back now, but he still got his hands clasped around the waist. It looks like he's trying to go for that single. Castillo popped up very well, though. Good I'm job sorry. of defense right now. But again, like you said, Racky dominating the position because he's choosing where the fight is, correct? Absolutely. Like you talked about, in any close fight, it's the person who's dictating the pace that's going to win that round. Just about halfway through this first round of the first fight of the night here at XMMA in Palm Beach. And that was a very, so very okay crafty D. move right that there. That was okay. He only had one fight down. That's exactly what we talked about earlier. This is the newer version of the downed opponent rule, correct? Well, and a lot of people are still using that. You're just putting that hand out thinking he can't hit me in the head. He can't knee me now. He can. It's a little bit different. People aren't using this. This is real high-level wrestling and real high-level positioning going on. Yeah, I, both, both guys are doing very good right now. Yeah, th these, guys, these guys belong on the main card. <laughs> these, guys are really, these guys know what they're doing. Well, and the thing, they don't have a lot of fights, really. I mean, you have four fights, you have six fights, but they look like people who've been there yeah. for several years. And that's the progress of the sport. Mm -hmm. It says a lot about how, where the sport is going. I mean, t 10 years ago, a guy who had four fights was not going to be very impressive. But these guys are well put together. Good, good, knee, good, good shot. Knee. And, and, and he's, Reggie's all over him like a blanket right now. He's really making it difficult for Castillo to get any kind of offense going on. He's playing defense the entire time. I can't believe you didn't use the opportunity to throw out a, a, a cheesy line. What was you, I going to say? Said, you could have said wet blanket, cheap suit, hair in a gorilla. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be, keep it classy. Just warm, just warm it up. Just warm it up. <laughs> It'll happen. Don't worry. 
Okay, right here, great jab. Oh, he's got the legs figure forward right there. That was uh, definitely a, a Khabib move right there, I think, is made but very probably because it works. That's exactly why he does it. Very difficult to do anything if you've got your legs figure forward. Yeah, Racky's got some pretty good wrestling and pretty good positioning going on. I mean, Castillo is really doing a great job of, of not accepting being taken down. But Racky just continues to keep his hands around the waist. And this is it the seatbelt position? Yeah, and, and like you said, he is doing a very good job. But you know what he's doing? He's losing. He's losing every second of the fight right now. You know, I think Raggy missed, missed the opportunity to throw some good shots there as they came off the fence. Yeah. I, I think he was just more interested right now, getting back, getting reset. I think you can see a little bit more urgency right now in Castillo because he knows he's been losing this round. He's got to do something to steal yeah. it right now. He's got, he's got 35 seconds to try to steal the round away in the eyes of the judges. And, you know, Castillo being Cuban, I was wondering if he, how much boxing and how slick his boxing was going to be if he had a little Chris Lytle in him. <laughs> uh, I, I think he does have some very good stand-up. Unfortunately, he's not been able to show it off right now. You know, that, that is one of the advantages of pushing the guy against the fence. They have good hands. You can't see it. Oh! Oh, and he's hurt. He's hurt bad oh, right go. now. Can he make it through the last 10 seconds of the fight? He's backing up. He's trying to get some space. Oh, Racky, big wow. knee. Wow, what a shot right there. Racky doing a great job, but it looks like he's going to make it to the end of the round. Castillo lives to see another round, but man, he definitely took an L in that first round. Yeah, and to be honest, the fight was almost over there. I yep. don't think you know just how close to being out he was. Very good chin being shown by there, getting, getting through a tough time. Now, hopefully, XMMA is going to put together some nice replays for us throughout the night that we'll be able to talk through. But, man, Radke looking really good. And look how calm he is. He's not really breathing so hard. Castillo is relatively composed, but he did take some shots, and he's breathing a little harder because, just as you know, even if you're in great shape, when you're getting hit in the head a lot, you start breathing <laughs> hard. Let's take Absolutely. a look at the replay. Okay, and here we go. That's a There's calf. that calf kick. Here, just a little bit more good action being pushed up by the – the side of the cage, throwing some good knees. There's good. That's just a little, just a little left hand that put his opponent down right there, Castillo. Yeah, in a world of hurt right there. I don't think he realizes how hurt he was. Yeah, Radke is really, really aware, and he picks his shots. He doesn't doesn't waste much energy. If he pops them when he gets a chance. Round number two. Here, are our first prelim of the night at XMMA. Let's get going. Five minutes. Now, what you really like to see is how somebody reacts after losing a round like this. Well, that really is the uh, the test of a fighter, right? If you if you if you could come back from from a tough round, you could fight through adversity. Because you know anybody can be a bully and beat up someone they're supposed to beat, but can you come back from getting smacked around? Well, to be a great fighter, I feel like you have to learn how to be a good hammer, but you also have to learn how to be a nail. Sometimes you can't be the hammer all the time. And how do you react when you are the nail? Some people fold, and some people, you know. Uh, burst on through. Now it looks like Castillo backing up quite a bit. Racky pushing up against the fence. Now back to his wrestling. Deep in there, double A. Got his hands clasped. Going to get the takedown momentarily at least. That was a great job by Racky right there. He waited until Castillo threw a power punch and then he, he ducked in for the shot right there. Wait till your opponent comes forward and then you know, get the attack. Very nice. I can't believe Racky only has four fights. I know. I mean, you can just tell. Well, you know, think about it. You've had this pandemic. He's moved down to Florida. He's been working constantly to get better with great fighters. So that's one thing he talked about. Training the, the level of competition, the level of training partners. Full mount. Much better. Full mount. Sorry to interrupt no, you. No, Transition. Fine. He's up against the cage. He's got full mount. Let's look for some strikes, or is he going to take the submission? He's being very smart right now. He's being heavy on his opponent. He's going to make Castillo do a lot of work to get out of this position. I'll tell you what, though. He got in the mount with four minutes left here in the first round. That is not a good sign for Mr. Castillo. Absolutely not. Now he's going to work to get that body triangle, I think, there. He just locked it in. This is a terrible spot for Castillo to be in. This could be the beginning of the end for Castillo. <laughs> he's got that figure four. He's just wrenching on that gut right there. But he's doing the right thing. He's transitioned to the straight leg. That takes some of the pressure off, correct? Absolutely. But, you know, Castillo's doing a good job right now of defending the choke. Uh, he's trying to get his back to the mat, which is the best thing you can do. Are we going to see a head and arm here? That's what, uh, he was, that's what Castillo's trying to avoid right now. He's trying to keep that arm. You have to be thinking of multiple things, and, and that's what he's done. There's still three minutes to go with Racky on top and mount and transitioning to the back as well. This is going to be a rough time for Castillo. This is going to be a real test to see if he can make it to the end of this round. If he does, I'll be impressed. I'll be very impressed, but I mean, not only is it, he's going to go for that head and arm again, it looks like he's really trying to lock that up right now, but he's going to have to give up his, his back entirely. Racky, and Racky's so patient. 
Yeah, but, it, but he's being smart. Anytime he's not advancing the position he wants, he just goes to the strikes, and that's going to open up more and more for his position because you have to stop those strikes from happening. I mean, obviously, he's looking for that rear naked choke, but I also think he's fishing for that head and arm. Would you agree, Chris? Yeah, I, I think the rear naked choke is people have gotten so good at defending, you have to look for other positions now. Great close-up angle of, the, of these fighters' faces and just the, just the heart and determination that has to go into the sport. You know, people watch this on TV and think, oh, I might be able to do that. But it's a different level when you're, you know, seven minutes, eight minutes deep in the fight, you're breathing hard, you've been taking some shots, and you got a guy grinding on you. Yeah, and that's exactly what's going on, man. And you notice how he keeps changing you know, that body triangle goes from one side to the other because the, the defense for that is to put it, put the foot on the ground and then alleviate some pressure. You talked about that earlier. And Racky just so patient, but Castillo's staying pretty composed. He's fighting the hands because that's what he's supposed to do, correct? Uh, that's what you have to do. If you get you know, the guy who locks up the choke, you have to be able to pull one of those hands down like he's doing right now. Yeah, he's trying to spin. He, you know, he's hoping to spin and end up on top in guard, possibly on half guard, and try to finish out the round up there. But, man, Rack, he's pretty flexible. He's got that nice figure four going. And he's just picking his shots to be very calm. You know, I, I know it does look like you could spin around pretty easy, but that body triangle is so <laughs> tight. You're not spinning. I mean, it's almost impossible to spin right out. You have to be very slick, very sweaty, and the guy doesn't have a good grip on it. Well, we're over eight and a half minutes into the fight. So these guys are semi-tired. They're sweaty. They're slippery. So it, it can happen, but it's definitely not easy. Yeah. If you do that, you've earned it. But right now, Okay, he transitions. Going to go for that head and arm choke yeah, again. we talked about it earlier. He keeps trying to get it. Now, Castillo's doing what we call answering the phone right now. He's trying to make it where you cannot get that other carotid artery in the position. But he's got that in there pretty tight. Just under a minute to go. He's lost the head and arm choke, but now he's transitioning. What's he looking for here, Chris? Oh, there we go. Castillo was able to lock an arm and roll over. Well, Racky going for several different positions and finally going for some submissions, and he eventually lost the position, but man, he was on top for over three minutes solid. Yeah. And right now, Castillo, he's going to have to do some major work if he wants to be able to get earn, earn this round. Well, not he might, he might not be able to win the round, but what he could do is win some respect back to Racky <laughs> and kind of, if he could really put hurt on him here in the last 25 seconds, he could kind of set the tone for the third round, possibly. Yeah, I mean, that's what he's going to have to try, but if you look at it, I mean, just defending that long is so tiring. And he looks like he just needs a break right now. I mean, he's really not off for any kind of offense right now. Well, he's going to get a break in about 10 seconds. Yeah, that's true, but I mean, he he, he can't take that break right then because otherwise he has no momentum going in those last well, rounds. Both his hands down there on the mat showing that he is you know, feeling, feeling a little tired. Well, I, I'm sure, you know, j just being in there for that long is tiring, let alone when a guy is throwing submission after submission and dominating position. That is so tiring just to try and stay out of his moves. Well, Castillo finished the round on top and kind of, you know, he ended on a good note, but it's not going to be enough to take that round, so he's definitely down two, run, two rounds to none. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, and I'm hoping his corner is telling him that right now. You have to have a good corner that you trust, and they got to be honest with you and say, hey, you need to do something different. You're going to win this fight. Look, great great double leg takedown right there. And it was perfectly timed. He waited for his opponent to step forward with that punch, and he shot it on the takedown. Here we go, seeing all the transitions on the back, and, and Radke, for a guy with four fights, has done a great job of controlling a very tough and strong opponent. And I'll tell you what, Castillo does have good takedown defense. Radke just uh, is still beat him. Uh, like I said, it's all about the, and there's a the reversal right there. Patient, you know, Castillo did a very good job of defending everything the entire time and waited for his time to shine. Castillo jumped off, jumped up right there at the end of the break between the rounds jumped off that stool and he's ready to rock he knows he's down absolutely he's, i think he's going to go for the win right here and you know just like you said cornermen need to tell the fighters look you're down you need to go it's either win or lose but you got to do it here in this round yeah and i'm sure he's got a good corner i'm sure he told him that right there because the way he jumped up and came out i like seeing that though i like seeing that you, know, you got nothing to lose you're down two rounds let's go out there and swing for a home run I mean, you might strike out, but at least you tried. Yeah, you, you want to go out swinging for the fences. 100%. Uh, try to spin him back fist, and it kind of backfired, put him right in a bad spot. This is exactly where Racky wants to be. And Racky's got, got his hands clasped around the waist. And, and, and that really is the telltale sign. If, he, if he's got his hands clasped around your waist, he, he's got a very good high chance of a takedown. Yeah, I mean, once, once you get it locked underneath there, it's, it's very difficult to stop. I don't care who you are. And we've seen this position a couple of times tonight, and you can tell Rad he's very good at the pressure of his opponent from here. You know, again, though, Castillo, his takedown advance is not bad at all. No, it's been good. Yeah. It's good, but he just got a guy who's pushing the pace the entire time. He's really good at just not accepting and ju jumping back up, almost like a traditional wrestler. They just, just get to their knee or to their feet, and they're exploding back up. Racky jumping into one hook on the back. 
Yeah, he's in a good spot right now. He's just wearing his opponent down because Castillo has to carry him this entire time. So that makes him, wears him out even more. And right, you see these guys right there in front of the Fight Network logo. We are going to be live on the Fight Network for our main card later on tonight. Or you can, can continue to watch us here on the live stream at XMMA.com. Chuck Buffalo, Charlie Racky on top of Wolverine Castillo, as he has been for the majority of the fight. Just, just a dominating performance right now. He's got the other hook in right now. Let's see if he tries to flatten him out. He is, geez. And we got over three minutes of Racky could be riding and grinding he on just, Castillo. He just got to make sure he doesn't get too high when he gets bucked off. Yeah, so what Chris is talking about is Castillo could, could scoot out the back door if his opponent gets too far forward and his weight kind of slides off the front. Yeah, if you can get your hips up high and just start bouncing, sometimes the opponent will fly it off. Uh, Racky complaining that his opponent is holding on to his glove, but I was going to say, you know, just like a happy Gilmore would say, it's all in the hips. <laughs> I don't think that was happy. I think that was Chubbs. <laughs> that, was, that was Chubbs Peterson. Yeah, you know. <laughs> there you go. Oh, go another choke. Very difficult to get in once again, and if the guy you get catch it in transition, but and especially when a guy has a big shoulders and big a neck as Castillo, it's hard to choke people like that. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank Black Chick BlackChipPoker.eu for being a sponsor of this great event, as well as HeadRush.com. All these sponsors helping make this event possible. We also want to thank Fight Network for carrying our main our main card on the show tonight. And you can just see the frustration right there in Castillo. He jumped in an awkwardly way in a weird position. Uh, but he has to try something different. Right now where he's at, he has no chance of winning. He knows that he's got to try to make something happen in order to put this fight into a different position. Well, he's got nothing to lose at this point. It's like go for broke, explode, try something, try anything, because at this point you're losing. It can't get any worse. Yeah, but, I mean, it, it's, it, what, what can you try this for? I mean, he was in a weird position. He jumped into another one. But a guy's on your back right now trying to choke you. It's very difficult to try something. But. You, could, you could try to buck. You could try to turn yeah. and go. You know, maybe go for something crazy like a heel hook or some kind of foot locker. Turn for, I mean, anything and everything is, is, is possible because right now he's losing the fight pretty badly. Yeah, well, what well, you said, you have to try and create some scrambles, and that's the key. You try to create some space, but right now he's continuing to go for the head and arm triangle right he now. He might get it now. This is, I think, the third or fourth time he's tried it. Castillo escaping him once again. I mean, you can just tell how wildly and how crafty, you know, to, to use one of your words, uh, Castillo is because he's staying out of all these very dangerous spots. And he, Taking some shots here, Castillo turning around. I mean, man, he is a, he's a tough kid. He's really hanging in there very, very well. He's defended a lot of submissions, and that in its, in its own way is somewhat of a moral victory, Chris. Yeah, it, it is a good moral victory, but, I mean, he's going to have to figure out exactly why he keeps getting put in this position and try and figure out a way to stop it. Not for this fight. This fight, I think it might be a little too little too late. Yeah. 45 seconds ago here in the third and final round of our first matchup of the prelims here at XMMA. Eric Apple joined by Chris Lytle, and we've had a great fight here to start things off. This is a grinding fight, man. This is one of those that just really wears you out. And if you're winning it, even if you win it, this is a grinding fight to tire him. Well, I don't think that Rag, I mean, he grinded, but he didn't take much damage at all. Did no, Rag he didn't take, but I mean, just applying that kind of pressure, it's still, I mean, you have to be in great shape to continue to put a fight oh, on he's, he's got to put some work in, that's for sure. Yeah. And you know, some, sometimes fighters, and we know, it, it's good to be in the ring for a while and get some work in. You know, some of those quick victories don't really help you. Yeah, they're, they're, they're great every now and again, but I mean, you don't get the, the ring experience you need. A couple seconds ago, you're going to hear the final bell right about now. Great first 15 minutes of action. Charlie Racky, as well as Garibaldo Castillo. Racky with his hands raised in the air, feeling confident that he won all three rounds. I mean, he might have even won one or two of those rounds by a 10-8 score, which is really, really impressive. Both these guys in great shape, though. And Racky didn't take any damage. I mean, he could, he could potentially get back in and fight here real quickly. I mean, he didn't really take very many shots at all. He took a couple kicks. But other than that, he is fresh and ready to go. He could fight again next month. Of course, the Florida State Boxing Commission going to tabulate all of the scores. They, they have three judges. They have three judges, and they add them all up. They double and triple check it before they announce it. Let's take a look at some replays. Nice spinning back fist there by Castillo. Didn't really work out for him, and Racky able to shoot under it, get those hands clasped again around the waist. And we see some of the action and some of the handiwork of Radke on the ground. He really, really kept position very, very well throughout all 15 minutes of the fight. 
a lot of coaches preach position over submission, and I really believe that Radke believes in that theory. I mean, he stayed on top throughout almost the entire fight, just grinding down, picking the shots, was never really in a big rush. I think we have our first decision of the night. Let's throw it up to the ex-MMA ring. It's Chris James. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action inside the XMMA cage, we go to the judges for a decision. All three judges scored the bout identically, 30 to 27. For your winner, by unanimous decision, Charles Chuck Buffalo Radke. What a great fight there, Charlie Radke, as well as.